People, my people, welcome back to Best Aussie Booze News and Reviews. And today, although Melbourne is in the midst of winter, I'm going to do the five best and simplest and most delicious cocktails we're going to be drinking this summer. And if you're watching this in the United States, this is the drink that you should be drinking about now. They're easy, they're quick, it's going to be a long each video, but trust me, this stuff is going to be absolutely stunning and it's going to knock yourself out. And for the Australians with the summer coming up, we're going to need a bit of pain relief and heat relief. Stay tuned. Delicious recipes ensure instead of just usual mayhem. Catch people, my people, this is a cocktail that is so damn unique, and we're going to give it a drum roll. This is the straw bang. And why am I calling it a straw bang? It's because when I made this one up using the only red root or Blutwurst snaps made in Australia and the Fragola Cielo from Rubello Wines, aka Rascally Ciders, and mixed it with the uh, soda water. My wife took one hit of this and she turned around and she said, well, that would blow an afternoon away. And I went, yep. So we're going to have it a straw bang. Now, as low as I am to tell you how to make your drinks. We have a cold glass with ice in it. We have a shot mix mixture. Moving it into sight. We have the sound of happiness. So what we have, what I do, is equal amounts of this beautiful, just delicious, beautiful. That was Schnapps, except no invitations because in Australia you can only buy Blutwurst from one place and they're not making an invitation to anything. Go and see that interview with Mona and Hussein. And this is unique, apart from this being actually the first cocktail I ever made up. So we have two shots of that. That is what the plus words you may remember is 40%. It's the real deal. It is a wonderful, wonderful liqueur to get, not liqueur, sorry, schnapps, to go sipping on. The strawberry stuff is a liqueur. It's 18%, schnapps is 40%. It's the real deal. So, one shot. Now, if you make up a large jug of this, um, you can probably well kiss goodbye to an afternoon. That's what my darling wife says. So we have two shots going in. It's interesting. When I gave the Fragola Cielo to Mona the first time around, she and tried it neat. She went, oh, okay. Wasn't particularly wild about it. Combine it with her beautiful, delicious stuff. And I will make the sound of unhappiness. So I will put the cork back into this baby. There are other uses of foot. For this one, I tend to press the shit out of a friend on Saturday night plus night with it. So, just soda water. Preferably long ways, but they have any long ways in my house at the time. So I'm just pouring it over. Oh, it's just turning that most delicious of all colours. You can see the things moving around. I'm going to grab my muddling stick. Because this would... <laughs> Basically, the straw bang will muddle you completely. You know, just move the, wrap the ice around so it mixes. Um, and here comes the bang bit off camera. I'll take a big sip of this. Oh, that is absolutely lethal. It's also the very first cocktail I ever made. You are? The Blutwurz or Red Rouge Snaps from Snaps Idea. The Fragola Cielo Strawberry Liqueur from Rebellion Wines. Some ice and some premium soda water. Quantities are up to you people because you're all big people because you're watching my fucking channel. You can certainly drop out the F-bomb because I should call this the uh, straw fucking bang. Because, well, when you drop a couple of these, it'll go fucking bang. And so on your afternoon. Pretty well anything else. So don't do this when you've got serious work to be done. 
Thank you for watching my very first cocktail. People, my people, subscribe, like, share, and stay tuned. I intend to have a version of the Long Island iced tea in the works. Catch ya. People, my people, welcome back to Best Aussie Booze News and Reviews. And this evening, I am doing the cocktail that I threatened Gary and Amy from Hill Martin Gin that I would actually do. It is straight off their website with its their Pinot Noir Gin. <clears throat> now, unlike their website, I am not strolling their recipe. For the simple reason, I had salmonella about 12 years ago. So the idea of using raw egg white in anything is, well, folks, it's just not going to happen. Okay, trust me. Nearly dying was not my favorite event. There's a couple of people here who wouldn't have existed uh, had I died. Mind you, some days I make, I'll make them wish that they all wanted to be dead. So this is the recently released Pinot Noir Gin. There is plenty of grape-based gins in Australia. Four Pillars does one, and I'll say straight up and down because I've been quoted online. If you tried Four Pillars and liked it, you are going to absolutely adore this stuff. Sound of happiness. So... You may have noticed that front and center there is a glass full of ice in it. I'm going to pour a healthy measure. Yeah, my wife's had one of those days. So it's a healthy measure of this gin. Now the other wonderful exotic ingredient <clears throat> that is found in almost every backyard in Melbourne is lemons. And I'm just going to squeeze a whole lot of lemon into this. And folks, this is your cocktail. Yes, it's a lemon sour. Now, I'm going to be tricky. I'm going to stir this. Because I test drove this on my severely, oh my God, I just want to kill people type wife this evening. And then I added ingredients. So I added soda water, which another sound of happiness than we hope. Yep, that's definitely a sound of happiness. So, Gary and Amy, I'm altering your recipe. No egg whites, but I'm thinning it out and making it a lemon sour spritz. That is right, isn't it? People are looking at me going, don't know, fuck if I know. Too late, I think. It's alcohol. I don't want to think. It's alcohol. So this is the kind of like recipe that I promised Gary and Amy, because like I say, consuming raw, raw eggs after having had salmonella with all the joy that didn't entail, is not going to happen. So I've altered the recipe and then made it a lemon sour, a gin sour spritz. Yes, I've had a couple of reviews this evening. Thank you, Gary and Amy, and a big shout out to them because they kind of like provided my free tickets to the Good Wood, Good Wood Wine and Food Festival. Yes, I have been drinking this evening. And you can guarantee there's going to be another cocktail next week. And there won't be any fuck ups like there was with the Port Phillip Island, sorry, the Phillip Island iced tea, where I successfully banged a hole in a glass and then spilt about half a litre of tea all over my fucking kitchen floor just when I was telling people that I was the intelligent one in my family. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share, and uh, remember these are the cocktails that look, they don't look good, but they damn well taste it. Bye. People, my people, what you have before you are the essential ingredients for what is called a depth charge. Now, depth charge comes from the fact that um, basically this baby goes off like a what depth charge. Now, I first heard about this uh, particular cocktail, if, you, if that's what you want to call it, from a friend who had married a Korean girl, who certainly was engaged to her at the time. So he walks up to Korea and the brother of the girl is about to be rather not takes him out and this guy was not the tallest or heaviest or largest Aussie that you would meet in any given week and the brother dropped 10 death charges which are vodka and beer into this guy and then proceeded to around and said okay um what's a white guy like you wanted to marry a good Korean girl like my sister now this guy was 170 centimeters at, I think in shoes in good shoes at that and would have weighed 65 kgs. So he gets 10 shots of vodka and 10 pints of beer, um, bottles of beer dumped into him. And then the um, brother-in-law and soul turns around and says, okay, um, 
what do you want what are your intentions towards my sister and obviously the guy's main comment to the about to be brother in law was <laughs> Bob. So that's what we're gonna to make tonight. So I'm gonna grab a shot of vodka. This one will happen to remain unnamed um, due to proprietary reasons. So and notice that the beer glass is not a sort of glass I was making my other cocktails in, mainly because I need to gently unscrew oh, it. Okay, we've got a shot of vodka. That goes in there. Now, the beer is called a beer cell. Now, the beer cell is a little German um, leprechaun slash gnome who used to be rather mischievous and fuck up batches of beer. So, you can see this baby is well and truly ready to go. Tip this in. They're both ice cold. I've been tipping in my fridge for a while. This is a 30 degree day in Melbourne. Look at the head on this. It is better looking than my head. The beer is ice cold. Let's see what happens when we grab a depth charge and drop one into yours truly. Oh. Now, the beer that I am drinking it with is a brown ale from Beer Cell in Seaford. The vodka is from Melbourne. I shall not disclose whence it has come. If they are ice cold, and um, I can imagine ten of them in, and I'll be, I'll be doing a whole lot of <laughs> myself. This is the depth charge. It is close relative to the bottom maker, which will mostly get made next week. Stay tuned for even the best cocktails that you can make anywhere, anytime, in your house. Good days, bad days, any day at all. Keep in mind, people, I'm about to make a caribou. No, not the furry reindeer that lives up on the North Pole. Silly. What I'm about to do is make the caribou that is easily available in Australia. I give you wild turkey, rye whiskey. <clears throat> I give you a cheap but good Greek wine from my local Greek grocer. And I give you what Woolworths, my local chain supermarket, insists is 100% Canadian maple syrup. Now, as I move this up close, because I've got to get it within easy reach. I believe that you are all big enough people, certainly ugly enough, but, well, I'm ugly enough, I don't know about you guys, to actually be able to determine the strength of your drinks if you've had a shocking day, tip her in by the leader. If not, you just make it up relatively mild. We'll give you the sound of happiness. As I tip in a measure of wild turkey rye whiskey. And then... I tip in a measure of this Greek Greek wine, and they're all cold because we know that caribous come from cold places, don't we? Yes, we do. Caribou are what the Laps and Eskimos and all that spend all day doing. Well, I'll let you finish that joke. And then a mere dash, I'll actually use the spoon on the end of my whizzy, the, the gurky. The whizzer, it whizzes, so it's a whizzer magurki. Pour out a, the recipe says, a dash of maple syrup. Now, I must admit, this is not a cocktail I've ever tried before. So we're in dangerous and unknown country, people. Like I say, all these ingredients, including the ice box, have spent time in my fridge. And I got this out of a cookbook. Sorry, not cookbook. A book of the ingredients of um, spirits. All the wonderful stuff that we make booze out of. So I'm going to have a sip of this. Mm. One moment, I shall pause filming and get the wife's advice. Okay, I run this baby past the wife and she says, yes. I am to make up another large one. So this is the simple three ingredient, or if you include the ice cubes, 
for a caribou. So you can get caribou in Australia. You just use a whiskey, a red wine, ice cubes, and something resembling maple syrup. I mean, rumor has it that that's maple syrup. I don't know whether it's true or not. I haven't met its parents. So thank you, people, my people. Stay tuned for more cocktails. I can guarantee that I will be cooperating over the winter with my friend Ben from Beer Cell, and we will be doing a shit ton of beer-based cocktails. So much so, I'm going to have to order the book off my friend Uncle Jeff, who runs that rather large uh, website that seems to sell pretty well everything these days, except for a sense of humor. My ex-wife failed to get that order. Thank you, people, my people. I know you've just subscribed. This is the caribou in Australia. It's served ice cold because, well, caribou live amongst the snow. Catch ya. People, my people, how do we make Jack the Knife, which is a Jack Daniels based cocktail? It's delicious, it's dead easy, and I'm about to show you. There are precisely three ingredients. The proportions depend upon you, depending upon the time of day you've had. But let me show you how this baby's done. The very first thing we do is um, we grab some crushed ice. I literally roughed this up um, out of ice cubes. I'm going to grab a good handful of this. It's one of those days that someone keeps on taunting us with, keeps on saying, I'm going to be a stinking hot um, cocktail drinking summer, and then it goes off and gives me 15 degree days like um, last Monday I did. So I'm going to put in a good healthy measure of crushed ice. It's certainly very chastised ice. So, yep, even more of that. Odin just needs to go a bit more. Okay, now um, the other essential ingredient is um, Jack Daniels the booze I'm reviewing this week. Now, I am using two shots of this. Okay, so the magic hands will pour out two shots. Thank you, Sierra Yankee, for the beautiful Christmas gift. Go to her Instagram page. So one, you're keeping me accountable, aren't you? Because I might just get carried away. Two shots of Jack. So I mash whiskey into there. Now, Bailey's Irish Cream. That's the other uh, wicked ingredient that goes into this baby. Um, this is a litre bottle because we know that a fair bit of this is going to go missing in my house. So we're going to pour that in. Two shots each because, well, we need to achieve parity. So two lot shots of that. So now all we do is do two things very carefully. One, we stir it. So we stir it all in. And two, what I do is, I'll make a point of not telling my other half that I've actually made this up. Because when I test drove this on the other, I heard the other night, um, there's this weird localized black hole that keeps on appearing in my house because um, I handed it to her thinking I'd get some back and it disappeared. So, live on camera. Oh, Jack the Knife slips the blade in every time. It is absolutely delicious. Three ingredients if you count the ice. You make it to your proportions and trust me, you're not going to be wearing a sad face at the end of this baby because I'm not. It's mine. Go and get your own. Main, 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 main. Thanks for subscribing, follow, share, and your friends. There's lots more cocktails in this one. People, my people, <laughs> it's, you've just immediately noticed that this is the cocktail that's not being made in the usual location out in my kitchen. Why is this, you ask? It's the school holidays, people are in the kitchen, and we're having friends over for tonight. I'm actually getting merry in the afternoon. So tonight is, well, now you're watching, is Dog's Nose. Dog Nose is a beer based cocktail, so it's a beer tail. Now, I will confess, at least one of the recipes I looked up for this said that the beer had to be warmed, but this is stupid. Have you ever met a fucking dog's nose that's not cold and wet? Dog's noses, if they're healthy dogs, are cold and wet. So, warm stout, sorry. The original recipe called for Guinness, but I'm a bit of a rebel. So, I am making it with 
Munda Beach Breweries Porter. I have a big glass with two ice cubes in it. Now, the gin doesn't have to be terribly good. In fact, do not use the top rated gin. So I would not be using Bond Beach Organic Drive in this particular beer tail because basically the gin is gonna get overwhelmed by the porter. This particular porter is rather dark. It's closer to a stout, which is the original recipe calls for Guinness, but I love things Australian, I love things Melbourne, and with the exception of the gin, which is Santori gin, uh, I'm going as local as I can. So, the simple recipe is, I grab the Santori gin, because I'm a type of guy, I'm pouring two shots into it. So it's the school holidays. It's gonna be a fair bit of alcohol. Um, drunk with three kids in the house, I assure you. So that's two shots of Suntory Sui Gin. Big on the citrus, nice, drunk, neat. It is proof. I'm grabbing my ice cold straight out of the fridge. Munda Beach Brewery, yes, link in the description blow my fingernails as I pop the tab on this. Any noises in the background, it's more likely my have to be 14 year old playing games on his computer. And basically what I've done off camera is pour this into the glass. So two shots of this wicked stuff, relatively plain but citrus forward gin. I'm going to stir, not shake. Note from the wildly stupid do not shake beer cocktails, okay? If you put this into one of these and proceed to agitate it, you know what beer is full of? Beer food, beer is full of gas, it's the reason why it froths. So if I grab it and go, like this, apparently that's really good for the skin. Not so good for the dis uh, temperament of the wife, who <laughs> then insists that one cleans up the entire fucking kitchen. Not that I would ever be that stupid. You can stop laughing. Yes, I've got an ex-wife to tell me I'm stupid. So yeah, do not shake beer tech cocktails, okay? Otherwise, like I say, that's really good for your skin. So, it's a good solid porter. Mildly chocolatey. There's a bit of coffee in there. Um, what am I like tasting? Yep, yeah, soft tan head, full bodied aromas, coffee and chocolate. Yep, that's the deal. So here is the beer tail. I have the beer tail drinker. And that. It's a way of enjoying beer in winter. If it's really cold, don't have the ice. You know, we have the hot noggin. So thank you very much for watching. That's the dog's nose because it's cold and wet and I've never really eaten a dog's nose, but this one's delicious. So chin chin or kanpai because it's got the Japanese in it. So it's tuned for more beautiful cocktails. Simple, two ingredients, like me, simple two ingredients. Gin and food. Mm. I could fall in love. Catch up.